What's up, Kid Family? Welcome back to the channel. This is a continuation of the R18 engine turbo build. Now, in the last video, I talked to you guys a little bit about the R18 engine and its limitations, capabilities, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about its fuel system. So stay tuned for the entire video to get some good information on the R18. All right, right over here, we actually pulled out the factory fuel injectors from the Honda Civic R18 motors. These injectors are very limited, and I'm gonna tell you guys a lot of information right now that I've seen, and I've seen tuning these injectors right here. So, these injectors from the factory have 185 cc flow rate. They're very limited. When I hooked up Hondata to the vehicle, and using the Hondata stock tune, wide open throttle, I've seen as much as 92% fuel injector duty cycle. If you guys are not familiar with fuel injector duty cycle, all injectors focus and run on a range that's efficient, right? Anywhere from 80 to let's say 90 pushing it. Anything over that, the injector does not flow as well. It's kind of overheating in the same sense. And the higher you go, the less efficient it is. And we don't want these injectors to be less efficient when we're running wide open throttle and let's say we're running boost because our fuel ratios will be off and if our fuel ratios are off, we can blow the motor. So it's actually a funny story. Once I tuned the Hondata ECU and I adjusted my short term fuel trims with my wide open throttle tables, running dialed in, I actually saw a decrease in fuel duty cycle. It was running around 80 to 82%. So me just adjusting the stock tune, calibration, dialing it in, I actually helped help these poor injectors work a little bit less, yet delivering the same amount of power. Whew, the 93 octane. So check it out, check it out. The fuel system has its limitations, right? The fuel system can probably run you, I'm not even talking about injectors right now, just the line, it's a, it's a returnless system. So the fuel comes from the gas tank to the fuel rail, to the injectors, and returns to the fuel tank using the same line, which is kind of crazy, but all the modern cars are doing it because they want to reduce the amount of emissions coming through potential hoses. So that's what a lot of cars are doing. Back in the day, you would have one line from the gas tank to the fuel rail supplying it with a fuel pressure regulator, which was vacuum controlled, and then a line back to the gas tank as a drain. Those system works better because as the vacuum increased, the fuel pressure increased. On these systems, that returnless systems, that is not the case. So when we're going to be in boost, we actually have to monitor the duty cycle, air fuel ratios quite properly so we don't have any lean conditions and potentially blow the motor. So the first limitation again is the fuel system. It is a returnless fuel system. On this system, on some research I've been doing on resources such as Hondata, your reliable range of wheel horsepower is anywhere from 200 to 20 to 250. Once you start pushing 250 to 300, you are probably having a big fuel pressure drop in the lines, which less pressure in the fuel means less pressure to the injector, less pressure in the combustion chamber, less fuel in the combustion chamber, lean condition all right so there's always a safe range and that safe range guys in my opinion is low boost anywhere from 180 to 220 wheel horsepower that's the reliable reliable area where you guys want to dial in your cars now if you do plan on running more boost right you guys have to make a custom uh fuel rail with a return style fuel system run some hoses tap into the return into the gas tank for a return i know i know there's a guy on youtube brown you guys can uh, holler at him he does some custom fuel rails that you can do a fuel return system um if that's something you're interested in give him a shout out on facebook here but um again we're trying to make this a budget build and use the capabilities of the engine and the systems around it 
that it came with. We're not trying to do excessive amounts of work because at the end of the day, we're running an automatic transmission and I know the limitations of that. That's the biggest limitation probably for me is the automatic transmission. So we're gonna make it low boost. That fuel system that came factory is okay for us, but these injectors are not okay for us because 185 cc's are not gonna cut it. Maybe with like one pound of boost, I can probably make these things work, but we plan on running five to eight pounds of boost with the eBay Turbo. So there's a lot of injectors out there that you can choose from. Injector one is a direct bolt-on fuel injector from a Acura RSX Type S or your 8th Gen Civic SI. These injectors come with 310 cc flow rate and they are a direct bolt-on once again. Probably the easiest injector to get around, get your hands on. There's plenty of SIs everywhere, people parting them out. You might find one here and there in the junkyard. And, and that's one of the best choices out there. Again, with the SI injector though, don't plan to run more than eight to 10 pounds because you'll probably be maxing out the duty cycle of those injectors. Now your second choice, and you probably, this is your probably your first choice because you read online all about this, are the Acura RDX injectors. So the RDX injectors are a very popular choice because of their well-known spray pattern, their atomization that they provide in the cylinders. And these injectors come from the Acura RDX again that had the one and only K23 engine which was turbocharged. So those injectors you may be able to pick up in a junkyard. I searched for months and months on end. I wasn't able to find a K23 RDX in the junkyard ton of replicas on ebay so be careful there's there's sets going for as cheap as like 30 40 dollars and just be cautious either buy oem from honda they're about 68 or 70 dollars a piece for the rdx injectors our factory clips that go onto the injectors won't fit the rdx injectors there's actually a adapter that you have to buy and it's, it could be plug and play if you get the right wiring harness or you can actually decap the factory pins there and that will work as well. And a 410cc injector flows quite good. You can definitely probably get close to 11 to 12 pounds of boost depending on the air fuel ratio. I'm currently tuning a gentleman here with the 410RDX injectors at about 8 to 9 pounds of boost. Our duty cycle at maximum load is roughly around 75 percent so it's not bad at all definitely has a good amount of flow rate and you're not exhausting the fuel injector now the next two choices are by dishworks that's the company that's pretty much the most popular here um, you got dishworks 450 cc fuel injectors and they also come with uh, dishworks 525 cc fuel injectors either one is good if you're going to go for higher boost, get the 525s. If you're going to be running anywhere under 13 pounds, the 450s should be enough. The dish works uh, supposedly come with an adapter as well for the fuel injector clips, so everything works perfectly. Now, you might be asking yourself, are there other companies? Yes, there are other companies. Probably uh, Injector Dynamics may have some uh, fuel injectors. These are the most popular ones that I've ran into. And this light's acting up all crazy again. Um, there on, on Handata itself, there's also some tunes with RC injectors. I don't even know if RC injectors are still in the game or if that was something back in the day. I didn't even look into that because these were the most popular choices for the build. Now you may be asking yourself, yo, what injector are you going for? with your r18 build and i was strictly going for the rdx injectors i was so set on the rdx oem rdx injectors from acura shipped to my door was for around 280 to 300 dollars which is a it's a big price for a budget build right but I came across a set of civic si injectors on facebook marketplace and i messaged the guy he was selling them for about $60. I messaged him, yo, I'll do $40. And then he actually said, 40 sounds good. And I asked him, I was very persistent on when I can pick them up. And he told me, 
hey, I'll just drop them off to work on Saturday, right, for one of my weekend jobs. And it turns out one of the maintenance guys that works at my job, he was a newly hired guy. He's big into Hondas. He was actually parting out a K-Series um, 8th Gen Civic SI. And he brought me those fuel injectors. Such a cool dude. I appreciate you, my man. Brian, I appreciate you. He actually gave me the whole K20 fuel rail and the Civic SI injectors on the house for free. So super blessed. You can't beat that price, right? Overall, I'm not planning to go on high boost, so I think the 310cc injectors will do just fine. One of my guys, I'm tuning a 9th Gen Civic SI right now for him. He's running a eBay Turbo TB25 with the 310cc injectors. He's having some tuning issues right now, some hardware issues, but right now the car seems to be doing okay with the 310cc injectors. Just not a lot of boost, guys, but we'll see. Um, I'm currently rebuilding those fuel injectors. They are missing a few components on them, so we got a rebuild kit coming on our way. I'll show you guys the whole process of the rebuild kit for and the rebuild for the SI fuel injectors. So stick with me. That's going to be probably in the next video. Hopefully this sums up the fuel system and the fuel. Hopefully this sums up the fuel system and the fuel options you have for the R18 engine as far as turboing it a big naturally aspirated build or a supercharger hopefully this video helped you guys out oh one more thing i totally forgot about it let's talk about the fuel pump the fuel pump in our r18 engine is the same fuel pump that's in the honda civic si this is huge i don't know how i was just about to end this video without talking about the fuel pump same fuel pump civic si and you know civic si pushes around 180 to the wheels factory and people push factory Civic SI pumps a lot harder. So our fuel pump in the Civic R18 should be good for our power goals, which is our power goal that we're trying to achieve here is around 170 to 190 wheel horsepower, which is still a great improvement. We're talking about 60 horsepower roughly to the wheels added to the vehicle. So I don't think our fuel pump will be an issue. We went to the junkyard uh, not too long ago again we pulled a fuel pump out from one of the salvaged cars we we check out that video too if you guys are interested i go pulling the i pulled the fuel injectors fuel pump i talk about all the things you need to turbo your car and stuff like that but uh hopefully it runs good on the factory fuel pump if it has any hiccups we can upgrade to walbro there's a also dishworks i believe a 65c fuel pump which has way more uh, flow than we will ever need right with with our boost levels you don't need that at all and again with the limitations of the fuel lines and the returnless fuel system putting in a bigger fuel pump isn't really going to do much to help you unless you upgrade to a return style fuel system but we're going to keep the fuel stock fuel pump stock and we're going to run those 310 cc honda civic si fuel injectors and the and the thing is i just hope everything runs smoothly but so far, everything's been looking good. So crossing my fingers. If you guys support this build, please leave a like on this video. If you appreciate any of the information, please leave a like. I'm trying to provide a lot of R18 content here that's missing on YouTube. So hopefully everyone appreciates that. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. I ain't here for the money. I ain't here for the fame. So it might be nice to own a jet plane. I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true. But the world is pretty cool. Yeah, dreams of my own, I've been working from home, I can do it on my own, but sometimes it gets cold.